we have the drive motors mounted in, we have the battery box mounted in, so now comes the fun part of trying to start wiring all this stuff up so that it works. So, um, I like using the Wayachi power switches, so that's going to be the first thing we're going to do. You have to mount it somewhere you have access to it from outside the robot, but you also have to mount it in such a way that it's going to get, not get killed. So on this particular robot, I decided I'm going to mount it here in the back of the robot so you can access the switch from outside. So we're going to we're just going to hold that guy in place right there. All right, he's good to go. Now the batteries, they're obviously going to slide right in their little, their little cubbies. And there, and they're good to go. Okay, so motors are in, batteries are in, power switch is in. This is my speed controller. Okay. So the larger one here is going to provide uh, uh, control for the weapon. These two are for the drive. Um, they're mounted up higher than I would really like because I have to be able to get to both sides of them to program them and, and connect the wires to them. So I would have I would have preferred them lower on this mount, but this is just what I had to get this to work correctly. Um, so it's going to be shock isolation mounted, which is kind of a big deal for electronics. They have to have some measure of flex. So component wise, these these wires actually go to the motor. The wires on this side is where power comes in. So I sort of cheated. This is the wire that's going to go to the switch, and I wired positive power in all together in one. Um, on the negative side, I just sort of made it a, a power block that everything is going to be connected to. So um, that's all of that. This is the radio, the receiver. Um, I haven't decided yet where and how I'm going to mount that, but that's pretty easy. I'll just wrap it in foam and zip tie it down somewhere. And then these are the main power wires that come off the batteries. Okay. So the batteries are 6-cell lithium polymer batteries, but I need 12-cell power to the motors I'm going to be using. So these batteries are going to be run in series instead of in parallel. So it's going to be, you add them together for 12 cell. And that's why you get this weird little crossover wire between the two. So this wire will go to the switch. This will be powered off of the switch to turn everything on. So that's where everything is wired in place. And then these all go to the motors. So let's bolt this guy in place and see how it all works. So the reason behind that shock mounting arrangement is all of this has some measure of flex to it and that really helps the survivability of those electronics that way they don't take the, the big shock loads. The output wires on this speed controller there are three of them or three of them on that go to the motors so the various different phases right. Um, these are literally just push fits, which also means under big hits, they can separate. Okay, So you need to find some way to make sure that those don't come apart. Um, you can use shrink wrap, you can use shoe goo, something like that. Um, at the very least, you should use tape. Um, tape is tape is easy because it's something that makes it easy to pull apart later if you have to change a speed controller. Um, but you need to find some way to mechanically lock those together. Don't re just rely on the push fit to hold those together. One of the safety requirements for all combat robots is a power indicator. You need to have some sort of lights that let you know that the robot is active. Okay. Um, so I've got some fairly large, these are LEDs for uh, um, trailer marker lights, so I like the, the little bigger ones. So I'm going to mount that guy right there and mount him into the, the wiring system so that 
every time it's active, and you've got a nice big red light on the side to let me know that it's, that it's ready to go. stage the, the robot itself is wired up so we've got um, the power switch back here so here's the the main power coming in from the batteries uh, main power coming out to the LED and to uh, to the speed controllers okay. um, got the negative block here for all everything that's bolted up the uh, wires are wired in to the motors um, other than the weapon motor. I don't have the weapon motor in yet, but as far as the drive stuff is set up and whatnot, it looks like a seal of wires, but this will all kind of clean up really good in here. Um, so at this stage, we're actually pretty close to testing some stuff. So uh, the next piece of this puzzle is programming the speed controllers to work with these particular motors. Um, and so there's, so there's a little bit of software work to get this set up in a way to work correctly for, for combat driving. Um, and so that'll be the next piece. We'll be programming this to do what it is I need it to do. So um, look for that video next. We're going to do some programming on the speed controllers to get them set up. And so that'll be, uh, that'll be down the road. So uh, keep watching. we got more mortician videos coming. It's going to be a lot of fun.